since the 2013 um, published kit. Again, most important thing is you know your layout. So you've got your skeleton drawn out and you've got your uh, load of your reference page and all the numbers ready to slot in. Uh, from there, working from the top down to the bottom, making sure all of these are in once and all of these here are in twice. Um, just one thing to note again, change your buildings of cost from 880. And be aware that you're taking the figure from down at the bottom to revalue the mate. Uh, so you always revalue your building. So in this case, buildings is 970 when we're going to put it in. Anyway, start at the top. Vehicles is the first one. So vehicles are tangible fixed asset. So what's your workings page? Uh, 260,000. Uh, vehicles accumulated depreciation. We slot, uh, slot that in as a minus. Uh, 105,000. Okay, uh, investment income for two. I'm going to use that to find the investment income due. So I'm going to find out where my investment income is. So it's 4% of 120,000. Sorry, 4% of 300,000, which is uh, 3.04, which is 12,000. Uh, you take away what you've, what you've received. Not 4.2. And you just take them away from each other and you get 7, 8 as your investment income due. Now, the investment income itself will go in your trading profit and loss account. And the investment income due, seven, eight, will go in your debtors. So it's money that's owed to you. So it goes in. Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, for sort of workings, only two workings to do. So buildings that cost 880. I told you that goes in at the revalued amount of 970. Okay, so uh, the building's there. Now the difference between the 970 and the 880, which is 90,000, goes into your revaluation reserve. Okay, so that's our buildings done. Buildings accumulated depreciation, 50,500. It also goes in your uh, revaluation reserve. Uh, debtors, 240 goes into debtors. I'm gonna just write a little less PDP there. And uh, creditors is your trade creditors of 184, which is in your, in your uh, balance sheet. Liabilities. Uh, four percent investments are your financial fixed assets, so they're three hundred thousand. Uh, stock seventy two is opening stock, so cost of sales. Uh, patents is an intangible. Uh, admin is admin. Uh, distribution is distribution, so you're just putting those numbers in. Again, just for all of you, I don't don't need to write the words here. I'm just doing it for so you can go back and see where the numbers came from. Uh, purchases is cost of sales one two six zero. And sales is 204,600, which is turnover. So that's in your, your first line here. If there was uh, sales returns, you would take it away from sales to get your turnover. Uh, rental income is other operating income. Uh, 5% to ventures is in your balance sheet so there'll be five percent of ventures they're payable back in 17 18 so we'll just write 17 18 there and that's uh, 200 000. And from that you work out your debenture income or debenture interest so five percent of 200 000 
which is 10,000. And then take away your paid when we get to it. So profit on the sale of land, 80,000, that goes in. We need a spot for profit on the sale of fixed assets in our skeleton. Uh, bank, that can go in. Uh, 57,800. Uh, dividends paid, no, sorry, VAT 74. Now that goes in taxation in your workings page. Uh, dividends paid of 50,000 goes in your, in your dividends paid spot. Uh, profit and loss 85,000, so it's credit, which makes it a plus. Uh, your two share capital is six, uh, 500, 150. You add them together and there's, that's your called up share capital of 650,000. Uh, provision for bad debts is debtors, 12.5. So put that in as a minus. Uh, interest paid, so we take that away. That gives you interest due. Now, if investment income due is debtors, the venture interest due is creditors, uh, other creditors. So the 2000 will go there. And last one, patent royalties, 14,000 uh, is investment income, is other income, sorry. So that's everything from the top in. Uh, from the bottom, all of these go in twice. So first one is stock, 85,000. So on your first page, they each go in once on each page. So your closing stock, going to take away that 85,000. And then in your, uh, in your, um, on your second page, and it goes in your uh, current assets. Uh, patent's written off. So the patent cost uh, 60,000 and it's been written off over 10 years in equal installments. Amortizement is written off. Uh, the amortization is in cost of sales. 60,000 divided by 10 is 6,000. So in our cost of sales, we've patents written off of 6,000. And then in our in our balance sheet, we're going to take our six thousand away there. So our patents will be thirty thousand. We'll just get that in there. Okay. Um. Then next one, provide for debenture interest due. We've done that. Investment in interest due. We've done that. Auditors fees six five. So auditors fees are admin. And when you're providing for stuff, it means you haven't paid them. So it has to be other creditors as well. Uh, next one, director's fees, 35,000. Again, same thing, you're providing for them so you haven't paid them to their creditors. Um, You've got uh, corporation tax sixty thousand. So corporation tax has a spot on its on, on the first page. It's a minus, and then corporation tax hasn't been paid yet. You're providing for it, so it's a it's a taxation there. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, your depreciation of buildings two percent straight line. Now it's of the buildings figure up here. So two percent of eight eighty. I'm going to put that in my revaluation surplus straight away. You're revaluing them. So it's a sort of easier to work backwards on this. So the depreciation charge for the year, it's 2% of the 880. That's 17.6. And it tells us that 40% of that 17.6 is distribution, which means 60%. 
is admin. So normally I would, you know, normally you do what's uh, in the trading profit and loss count first, but in this case, it's easier to put, put your answer in your revaluation reserve and then work out your percentages after. And you're just splitting it up. Okay, the next part then, uh, there's no purchase or sale of buildings during the year. That's just going to be for this tangible fixed asset note later. Uh, vehicles are depreciated 15% of cost. Depreciation of vehicles, unless you're told otherwise, is always a distribution cost. So it's 15% of 260, which is 39,000. Now, that will go on your second page in your tangible fixed assets as a minus. If you just think about that, that's just adding it to the 105 as a minus for your accumulated depreciation. Um, revaluation reserve, we've done. So we've we put in the, the 90,000 surplus. And last one then is included in the administration is a receipt of 18,500 for discount. So receipts are on the credit side here. So in this administration, 206, there's 18,000 on the credit. Which is, you know, it's brought the administration too low, too low. So to, to, to move it over into other operating income, which is was where it should go, you have to debit uh, 18,500 onto it. So you're debiting an expense. So you're adding on that 18,500 uh, for your discount. So you're adding it on to get rid of it. And then we're going to, to credit it over here. So we're adding it on over here as well. Okay, so that's everything in. All right, so it's now just a matter of totaling the stuff up and getting the numbers in. So we'll do that. Uh, so I'll do the first page ones first. Um, so we've got the 153 for our cost of sales, 240040, 276560, and 965. So I'm going to get them in because they're the only four I have for my first page. So 1523, or 1243, um, 240040, and 96.5 okay that allows me to finish off my first page so we take away our cost of sales to get our gross profit and take away your two expenses and add on your other operating income that will give you your operating profit add on your two incomes your your investment income and your profit on the sale I've left out the interest payable there, sorry. So the interest payable was, that's, which is a minus, obviously, that's 10,000. So add on your two profits and take away your interest payable. And you get 449,500. Take away your tax to get your profit after tax. Uh, dividends proposed is zero take away your dividends paid and then add on your profit brought forward because it was a profit it was a credit so that gives you 424 500 which i'm going to put in now into my profit carry forward okay so you can go back and check that that's just putting in numbers and doing the sums so then my, what am I missing here? Tangible fixed assets, so I'll get that in next. So, tangible fixed assets, 108.6000. So I'll add up my three assets there. Get 141600. So from my current assets, my debtors is what's missing, so I'll get that in. So remembering that to take away your BDP. So it's seven, eight plus 240 minus 12, five. 
So it's either two five two three five three hundred. So add those three together. Three seven eight one hundred. Uh, dividends due zero, so I've taxed you and other creditors in my liabilities. So uh, that's one three four, and then uh, forty three five. So we'll get them in. So one three four for my taxation, and forty three five for my other creditors. Add them up, take them away. Really important to show your answer on a separate line and call it working capital. So that's 16.6 for our working capital. Because it's positive, you add it on. Okay, um, there's no provision for liabilities and charges. So revaluation reserve is my last one to go in in my finance buy. That's one five eight one hundred. Just add the three of those together and add your answer on to your debentures and hopefully balances. One four three two six hundred. Now I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm absolutely flying through that and um, I can just do the sums very, very quickly and have everything ruled out. But it is a case of just getting the numbers in um doing the sums and throwing them in uh, that's going to get you about 70 of the 85 marks i would think um the rest of the marks are going for the notes to the accounts so be aware you're not even it's probably less than 70 you're you're if you just stop there you're you're probably at a h3 level on a question that you should be getting 100 percent in so the first one is you'd be asked to do four of these accounting policies notes and the first one is the one on tangible fixed assets and st on stock. Now that's just like a little paragraph that you have to learn off. Uh, I've got it written out already, so just copied and pasted it from the previous question. So uh, buildings are revalued at the end of the year and included in their accounts, the revalued amount. So you're, you're saying that you've re revalued buildings. Depreciated is, depreciation is calculated to write off the value of cost of fixed assets of tangible fixed assets over their useful economic life as follows and you say what the depreciation rates are and you just take them as they're written here so depreciation tells us for buildings depreciation is two percent straight line so we write that two percent straight line and for vehicles it's 15 percent of cost so we will write vehicles 15% of cost per annum. Okay, so that's all we do. Stocks are always valued on a first in, first out basis at the lower of cost and at realizable value. Just learn that off. Okay, um, nearly like it's part of your skeleton. So operating profit then, the note on that is, you have to say what's included in operating profit that would not be, that you would not straight away know from looking at this. So you're looking at your three expenses, cost of sales, distribution, and admin, and you write down everything that isn't cost of sales, distribution, or admin. So traditionally cost of sales. So basically they are your patents written off at 6,000, your depreciations, and then your auditors and directors fees. We don't include the discount because that's just a movement from one account to another. That's already, that is going to be included in other operating income. So it's patents, depreciations, and then things in your admin that aren't admin. So auditors and directors fees. So we just write them in. So patents, 6,000, depreciation. And just add up your depreciations. So the depreciation on tangible fixed assets are, uh, I'm going to come down here to look at them, it's easier. So 17.6 and 39,000. So that'll be 
uh, 17, 6 and 39,000 will be 56, 6. And then just your auditor's fees of 35,000, or sorry, 6, 5. Uh, and director's fees of 35,000. So that's all you do with that. Uh, for interest payable, just say what the interest payable is, and you must say when the, the ventures are to be repaid on. So interest payable on the ventures, and they're repayable by 2017 and 18. And the interest payable is 10,000 per year. Okay, so that's the first three. Then your last one is your sort of big one, your, your tangible working on stock. So, or sorry, your tangible fixed assets. So what we're trying to find here is your cost at the start of the year, cost at the end of the year, depreciation at the start of the year, depreciation at the end of the year, and then your two book values, which are cost minus depreciations. So you've got two assets, land and buildings and vehicles. Now, for land and buildings, you work backwards. So the cost of land and buildings in the accounts at the end of the year are the, is the revaluation reserve level of 970,000. So we put 970 in there. Of the 970, how much of that came from, being, uh, from land and buildings being revalued? So they went from 880 up to 970, which is 90,000. And then what disposal of land did we have? So come down and check your workings. Land which at cost seventy thousand was sold. So disposal is seventy thousand. So a bit like your incomplete records, work backwards. What number minus seventy plus ninety is nine seventy? So we'll take the nine seventy, take away the ninety thousand, and add on the seventy thousand. And that'll give you 950. So that we must have had 950 worth of land and buildings at the start of the year. If we sold land costing 70, that gets you down to the eight, 880, and then we revalued another 90. Okay, so for vehicles, it's a little bit easier. And vehicles started off at 260. You didn't sell any, you didn't revalue any, so the 260. Now it is important that we total those up. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that. So, if we just total them up, that'll give you your, your totals. You don't have to show the disposal and the depreciation in the total. You can if you want, but. Now, we do the same for depreciation. We know for land and buildings, depreciation at the end of the year is zero because you've revalued them. What did you start off with? So, you started off with uh, land and buildings depreciation of 50,500. What charge did we have for the year? So we had the land and buildings depreciation charge of 17,600. So we add that 17,600 on. So we know that we had 67, 68,100 depreciation and it got down to zero. So we must have revalued by 68,100. Okay, so it's what we started with. We put on our expense and then how do we get back to zero? Take away the two together. For vehicles, we started off with 105,000. We had a further depreciation of uh, 39,000, which means then Obviously, no revaluation of, of those. So that's 144. And then again, total them. Okay, and we put in our book values. Our book values are our cost at the start of the year minus our depreciation at the start of the year, which is completely wrong. So 899,500. For the second one, it's 970, 
970 minus 0 is 970. For the vehicles, it's 260 minus 105 and 260 minus 144. And when we total them, 105, 400 and 108, 6000, which by the way, you can check your right by just going back up here to your fixed assets and should have 108, 6000 there. Okay, so that's your uh, your accounting notes, and that gets you up to 85%. 15% of this question is going to be for theory. Okay, so, and they're always sort of similar questions around published accounts. So name the bodies or institutions that regulate the production, content, and, and presentation of uh, company financial statements. So there are four bodies who do that. I would suggest we need to probably know all four. How do they do it? Um, the government do it through legislation. The European Union do it through directives and regulations. The accounting bodies themselves, so the Accounting Standards Board do it through FRSs. And the Stock Exchange uh, do it through listing rules. That question gets asked regularly enough. Uh, what is an audit or what's the role of an audit and explain a qualified auditor's report so an audit is uh, an independent examination of the financial accounts uh, of a person or the financial accounts of a business uh, the auditor's job is to give an opinion about the accuracy uh, of the accounts and whether the accounts have been uh, whether the accounts have been published under um, using the correct guidelines. So basically whether they give a true and fair reflection of the financial position of the firm using the correct accounting measures. Okay, uh, what's a qualified auditor's report? So a qualified auditor's report is if he qualifies his report by saying he, he's not satisfied, basically. So a qualified auditor's report is when the auditor is not satisfied uh, that the accounts give a true and fair reflection. And it might be qualified uh, because the accountants haven't used correct, uh, correct reporting uh, procedures. Uh, all of the information not, may, may not have been made available to the auditors. Uh, net assets are more than 50% of, of called up capital. Um, and so on so it's important you just you're able to give a little bit of information on those all right I, I, i'll probably do i will do up seven notes of all the answers to all of the published questions uh for next week or so all right we'll see you